Steve. I'm so excited hey. to meet you virtually in yeah. this world. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Yeah, I was just saying earlier that it's so nice to meet you, and I've wanted to meet you for for several years. So I'm I'm really glad that it's come together today and come together around JFF and Horizons. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I feel the same way. I have been following the work that you've been doing and um, and your personal journey, which I find just fascinating. Mm, thank and I you. Feel like we have a lot in common in terms of, uh, you know, Inside Track's mission is unlocking potential in, in individuals. And, yeah. you know, I think that's totally aligns with the work you all are doing as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Especially in this critical juncture of, you know, early, early life, early career. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it feels like when I look back at my story, that period of time was so important. Yes. Um, when I, when I look at it with some, with perspective, I'm not sure sort of if I had the appreciation in that moment, I was just trying to struggle to stay afloat and, um, right. you know, just take really one day at a time. And, and now when I look back at it, wow, things, things really changed at that moment in my life. And I just feel so fortunate that, that they did in the way uh, that, that they, that they, they did because you know it's it's helped kind of set me up and set my family up for for a better a better yeah. future um and now well, thinking and about how ask, we yeah mm. I have to ask you because so I my first job was at McDonald's and I know that you tell the story of being fired from McDonald's and oh um, your first job was at McDonald's as yes. well do you know how few people there are that I, I come into to contact with whose first jobs or maybe people who would actually admit that they right started at McDonald's. <laughs> Best lesson, you know, time to lean, time to clean, you know. Oh my and, gosh, yeah. And everybody has time. to clean the bathrooms eventually, so. <laughs> oh, what a time, what a time in my life. It's probably the reason why I, I like, even through COVID, really, really wanted to find ways of continuing to get help at home. Right. Um, because I, I really, I just can't go back to cleaning the toilet again. Um, <laughs> there were a couple of months there last year where I, there was some PTSD, I think, from those early right. McDonald days. Right, right. Yeah, that is awesome. I mean, it's a good learning experience, right? And, um, and you know, I'm also a yeah, first generation uh, sure college was. student. And, you know, understanding, like, as we, as I moved into college, um, not, like, not knowing what I didn't know, you know, there was just so many things that mm. I now look back, as you said, from perspective of time, where you look back and realize that you didn't yeah. have the guidance and the help to navigate that other people had and you just didn't even know what you were missing in that experience yeah 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 so true and it's probably one of the things that now I look back at the McDonald's experience and that type of work that I did where although I didn't have those conversations like um, other more privileged families might have at the dinner table McDonald's was sort of my view into into the world and right. And I got to see not just how families like my own sort of behaved and what they, you know, just kind of picking up little conversations here, here yeah. and there, uh, totally. especially on cleanup duty on that second floor, I will never forget. Um, <laughs> but also families that were different than mine as well. Right. And, and the interactions that I had with, with so many different people from di different backgrounds, different walks of life, and just seeing different family structures and and so on, how people dressed and talked and walked and right. the cars they came in. It was, it was a really interesting view into an adult world that was very, um, yeah, it was very new to me at that time. Right. Yeah, I agree. And it's, you know, yeah. you live in your kind of world yeah. of your family and then to, to be able to expand, you know, mm. beyond that and see that there are opportunities mm -hmm. that you didn't know about. Um, and then how mm -hmm. do you go after yeah like, have that motivation yeah to achieve, right yeah oh what are my the god for sure what coaching? was go ahead go ahead mm. oh, oh i was just gonna say I, I, I was actually going to ask you as a, as a bit of a as a bit of a digression what was your um like how long did you did you last at mcdonald's and yeah. is there like so, was there some was there sort of a story or, a, or an experience that still sticks with you from it yeah, I would say my story was kind of the opposite of yours. I, so I was there, so I started right mm -hmm. after my 16th birthday and I quit when mm -hmm. I went off to college at a little over 18. And I actually mm -hmm. came back that first um, okay. winter break and worked like winter break for them. Okay. Um, 
you know, then after that, I, well, I found better paying jobs, although interestingly, it was like warehouse work, um, you know, because I didn't, I didn't have mm. the social connections again, right? So I didn't have the internships in college mm. that other people had, but I was just looking to make money to help pay for my education. Um, but so my true. McDonald's experience so was very positive, you know, I, and to your point, I met mm. people that were different than me. And, um, and I made some lifelong mm -hmm. friends uh, from that group as well. Mm. And I will say it motivated me to say, I'm going to college. Like I'm going to do something yeah. different. Yeah. Well, stay, you know, in this, yeah. in this place forever. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that part around vision is so important. I remember these conversations I used to have in closing duty uh, with, with uh, husband and wife that were part of the cleanup crew during mm -hmm. the week. And they were in their late fifties, early sixties, had been working at that McDonald's for 25 years, something like that. And there was a sweetness to the couple, which is why I remember them so well. They used to come to work together and leave together and, you know, and, yeah. and, and do their, do their jobs together. And there were, there, there was also the, the sort of the, the inspiration around, uh, well, I'm not sure this is the vision that I have for myself. I mean, actually, I knew yeah. that was not the vision that I had for myself. Right. And, and I didn't know any, you know, it, it's not like I, I had um, a better, like I had 10 other ideas in my mind. It just was, I'm not sure that's what I want to be, I want to be doing. And I remember, I remember um, the, the husband telling me once, like, Raheem, you, you have to, like you, you have to get out of here. Like you, you know, you <laughs> yeah. have to get out of here um, at some point. And, and uh, there's so much more out there. There's just so much more out there um, right. for you. And, and um, yeah. And I just figured like, you know, he was like a first generation immigrant. He didn't have, a, he didn't have, you know, any education, any connections as you were saying. And so, you know, his journey in the country just started with him trying to get any type of work for, for him and his, his wife that he could. And, <laughs> And that's, you know, what it ended up being for himself. And I was thinking for myself as a second generation immigrant and the, the hard work that my parents had done to get there. Uh, right. You know, my parents, my dad worked in a parking lot. My mom was a caretaker. I figured, okay, gosh, I've got the, the advantage of growing up in this country, um, you know, probably affords me more, you know, probably, there's probably more to it, right? And, and right. I felt a bit of a sense right. of responsibility as well. Um, around figuring out what that meant for me. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things we do in coaching is that we connect um, students to their why, to their vision. Mm. You know, why did you start on this journey? And remembering that along the way so that when you hit the mm -hmm. obstacles that we all hit, you know, that, mm. that you stay connected to that ultimate goal um, yeah. you know, to help you achieve it. And I, you know, I think that is something probably both of us did along the way, but it might've been unconsciously, right? But having mm -hmm. that vision of something, you know, different for ourselves that we wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. But you didn't go the higher education route, right? At least not um, out of high school because you you were yeah. creating, innovating. <laughs> yeah, again, like what a, I ended up getting fired from Mc, that McDonald's, which is sort of how it all began, which at the moment, in that moment felt, so embarrassed, I had so much embarrassment, so many different feelings around it and was what felt pretty low in the moment. But it, I also felt my back was against the wall and with my back against the wall, it, it sort of, I don't know, forced me into thinking yeah. creatively about what, what those options might be, right? Like what that vision might be for myself that didn't include McDonald's necessarily. And that was when I started really looking at what was happening in, in, the, in the technology industry in Silicon Valley and seeing young, young people, not much older than myself at the time, on the front cover of magazines. And, yeah, right. And it just felt, it really resonated with me. And I felt like, wow, that actually represents all of the kind of values that I might not have been able to articulate, but felt represented in, in, in these individual stories of just sort of charting the unbeaten path and so on and uh yeah when I look back at it, it you know I took I took took some some I guess you could say I took some risk uh in in not going down the traditional education path but I also feel like that risk was sort of well-founded because I didn't have that many opportunities to to really begin with. And so if it didn't work out, I always figured I could go back. And ultimately that's what happened that the first company did well, the second one didn't go well. 
and then I ended up, you know, going to community college, uh, you know, right. three, three, four years later, three years later than, than my peers or three years later than I would have. And, um, and I think that, that, you know, when I think about sort of how I got from that part of my journey to, to where I am now, the, the point you made around the coaching and the support and having that person in your corner feels just so, so critical in hindsight, right? but not having the connections or not even knowing that that was important. Exactly. Right. Uh, um, yeah. Sort of turned it into, to, well, something I'm lucky that it, it worked in the way that it did. And I wonder for you, given, given the, the critical part of, of, you know, an, an individual's life as they're going through sort of this sort of high school into college and beginning to to get into you know the adult world and yeah. and but not but not necessarily having the support um, you know um, prepackaged. Let's say right. uh, I, I'm curious, like what what meaning has the has has the co- like I'm so curious, like what has you doubling down, tripling down on the importance of coaching it's it's hard to pull off it's hard to scale as as you grow and and I'm, I'm curious sort of what keeps you focused on that commitment yeah yeah absolutely you know and it's interesting because while we do work with um a lot of the high school uh transitioning into college we also mm. work with a lot of what they you know non-traditional students and I put that in quotes because the reality mm. is over half of you know, right. higher ed students right. are non-traditional. Right. And non-traditional actually happen to be traditional. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, we have a lot of people out there who are, you know, um, they are moms with kids at home, they're working full-time and going to school, you know, and mm. how to balance all of those things in your life and still mm-hmm. focus on your goal. And, you know, I think what we found is that um, at the end of the day, that, that interpersonal connection, that relationship mm-hmm. building that happens in coaching is so mm. important. Uh, you know, mm. people think that students drop out because of finances, which is certainly a, a factor. Um, mm-hmm. but many times it's other life events that mm. stop them from continuing in school. And really they just need that um, supportive person to help them think through yeah. their plans. You know, yeah. You know, tell them what to do. We help them come up with yeah. their own plan so that yeah. they they focused on their goal and then figure out a way to continue to make it happen. And for many mm. students, especially um, first generation underrepresented students, mm-hmm. they change the course of their life, the course of their families, of their communities. Yeah. So just you know yeah. having that coaching. So everything we do is coaching powered because we mm. really believe that that's the core of what makes the difference. Though mm-hmm. we do use technology, you know, we, we use nudges, we use emails and texts and all those things mm-hmm. to support the program, but the real magic happens in the coaching interaction. Mm. Now your students who are, um, who are going through the program that you offer, do, do they mm-hmm. have that kind of support or what, what kinds of supports do you provide to them? Yeah, it feels in spirit. It feels very similar. Uh, yeah, we so we you know um, individuals are coming to us at that at that sort of um, they're in the in the job market. They're looking for an outcome. They're looking to, to embark on a career. They don't have the connections. They don't have the support. They yeah. are probably on job boards, right. you know, submitting hundreds of resumes, not getting responses back, trying to figure out what they do, what to do, and that's typically around the time most of our our, um, our our students learn about SV Academy and and what we try to do is get them as quickly as possible into an outcome because we found that you know the importance of well sort of just getting getting the the foundational like financial footing let's say starting to to, to get a paycheck and a paycheck yeah. that's family sustaining as J- JFF you know, speaks, speaks a great deal about, but then also that the, that so much of the learning happens on the job. And, and again, that's sort of the focus around, even in this conference around apprenticeships yeah. um, feels very true to me in that, in that moment. That being said, while the SV Academy structure sort of helps people get into a job outcome, double or tripling their income, you know, in a matter of weeks or, you know, months, several months, um, without the, the, to use like a technology term, like human in the loop, mm-hmm. we find that it's, it's hard to get people all of the way through, even if the outcome is, 
so great and, and even in that sense so near term right. because there's there's so many factors at play um, in the system of, of each one of these individuals and um, and once you sort of get um, you know if you have that motivation and, and you're trying to get through but then something happens and you get off track it's really hard to pull people back in and, and getting off the off track with our program can can slow people down by yeah months if not years so we've but at the same time providing one-on-one -on -one attention is really hard to scale at high levels of quality and yeah. so we've struggled with it and where i think we have generated some learnings and now some early successes is leveraging the community of graduates to provide that coaching yes. support right mm -hmm. right and and it creating this win for all where of course the the individual who's who's struggling gets the support that they need in the moment that they need it but also the individual providing the support is someone who has been there before and likely not that yeah. long ago and can really relate and understand the issues yeah. in a way that that I I certainly can't relate to in the same way right this McDonald's yeah. my experience with McDonald's for both of us now is quite some time right. ago I realize yeah um, and uh, and so there is this sort of virtual virtuous cycle that, that, that um, the more graduates that we have, the more uh, coaches and mentors yeah. um, are available for for the for the job seekers coming in. Yeah, you know it's so interesting because I feel like so much of what both of our organizations do have this core of connection, you know, mm. and yet we have like gone through this year of disconnection, you know, yeah. and, and how people feel um, more separated due to COVID and, and being, mm -hmm. um, you know, forced behind doors in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm curious, did anything change in a, in a big way for you because of COVID? Like, how did you have to adjust? Mm. Certainly been a roller coaster. Yeah, and I'm so <laughs> curious to ask you the same. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, for us, uh, very quickly, like, uh, we knew, we, we, we got into SV Academy because given our backgrounds, we knew that that the jobs that were available to us when we were growing up were most likely not going to exist, you know, in let alone, not just another generation, but probably not 10 years from now, just given the amount of automation that's happening. With COVID, it feels like that automation has accelerated to right. a level where all of these individuals that we figured at some point in time we would need to be capable of supporting um, over a period of you know years are all now applying today and, and are raising their hand to ask for that help all at once. Yeah, and it is a uh, it's both challenging in terms of supporting the volume of needs so quickly, and at the same time incredibly meaningful because it's just again reinforced the purpose of our work and I'd say I'm seeing that exist as, um, particularly in individuals from retail sales and service backgrounds oh yes and, and so the percentage of so individuals mm -hmm. yeah um, who are applying from those backgrounds is is way higher like it's 10x what it was last year and um and so the good part is that the demand for our graduates, individuals who can who have been trained to wor uh, work in entry level jobs, customer facing jobs at tech, our tech company employers, has also increased very significant, right. significantly. Again, because of that automation and that yeah. loop is so tight and it's just so so uh, intense uh, in this moment that it's creating a lot of a lot of growth and, and a lot of learning in, in, in a very quick, quick way. Um, and I'm, so that, that's for us. So, you know, a lot yeah. of good um, yeah. overall, I'd say, and very uh, uh, more optimistic um, for the future. Um, um, so I'm curious for you as well, yeah. like there's, there have been so much change, there's so much change happening in education right now um, yeah. and, and the way in which people are accessing education and, and needing support and so on. I'm curious sort of what, what's happened for you and if you have any learnings. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting for us because um, kind of two things happened at the same time. We officially became a nonprofit um, that ah. spring right after, like it was April right after COVID hit. Mm. Um, and, and then we had, we're dealing with COVID at the same time, but that ended up being a very good thing for us because it positioned us to be able to help students that were... Mm 
facing challenges because of COVID in a way we couldn't have done before. So we ended up working mm-hmm. with some philanthropy and, you know, received funding to be able oh, to wow. have crisis response support for students yeah. who, you know, were in this period where they, like, they lost their restaurant job, which was mm-hmm. helping them pay for tuition, you know, and mm-hmm. they could no longer mm-hmm. pay their rent. Um, or they, you know, were thinking about, you know, leaving school because um, they didn't want to be exposed and they had family members that were concerned and, you know, mm-hmm. all of these things that were going through um, everybody's heads at that time. So mm-hmm. it really was great for us in that way. And then we were also lucky that we are already, we were already a remote workforce. So we do have mm. offices in Portland, Oregon, but we have coaches that work all over the country from their homes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we're doing that. You know, we were Zoom experts before everybody went on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I felt fortunate that we didn't have to make that transition. Of course, our employees still had kids at home that they didn't before, you know, spouses or roommates. Um, so, you know, they were still dealing with a lot of stress and additional um you know, just the burdens. And I do feel Mm. like a coach's job can be very emotionally taxing. You're you're working with Mm -hmm. students every day and sometimes there's just a lot of emotional give in that experience. And so then to have Mm -hmm. COVID at the same time was a lot. Mm. So we spent a lot of time as an organization on self-care and making Mm -hmm. sure employees were um, thinking about what they could handle and, you know, what we could expect um, so Mm -hmm. that everybody was in the best place that they could be. And, you know, of course, we didn't know how long it was going to go on. So, you know, the longer it went, you know, it it had a lot of impact. Um, But I feel good about the work that we've done to support students through the transition. And Mm -hmm. we also did a lot of work with online schools previously. So Mm. it helped us when schools had to suddenly shift to that, Mm -hmm. um, that Mm -hmm. we knew how, we knew what students needed to be successful in that environment Mm -hmm. and to help Mm -hmm. them with that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It, 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 you know, it begs me to ask the question, like I talked a little bit about sort of what's happening with us in terms of the different forces of change and start and, and, and feeling some great optimism. I'm curious to, to just yeah. hear the same from you perhaps as we end um, yeah. what, you know, what, what, you know, what creates optimism for you as you look into the future. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think COVID has triggered everybody to kind of relook and evaluate mm-hmm. what works, what doesn't. And I hope we all keep the good and get rid of the bad and same, use it, same, use it yeah. as an opportunity, you know, to really adjust. And I think higher ed has been forced to mm-hmm. do a lot of that self-reflection. And I think good will come out of it. And hopefully we'll all be more student-centered, more individual-centered, you know, because um, mm-hmm. we all, mm-hmm. I think, you, know, you and I, both of our organizations at least want better things for people, right? so yeah yeah there. yeah 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 absolutely yeah absolutely I, I think when we look back you know over the the arc of time I think will as challenging as this moment is for for so many communities in the country I I think we will look back at at this being a, a positive force of, of change and as you mentioned like a moment of real you know, re-examination yeah. of what's important for us as a, as a, as a country, as a society, um, you know, looking really hard at our institutions and, and sort of the way in which we can, you know, redesign them, um, you know, particularly, yeah. you know, by, by reaching out and, and creating partnerships in the ecosystem partnerships that JFF, you know, is, is so strong at, at forging, um, it's that type of model of cooperation that yes. that makes me excited about the future. I completely agree. Yep. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, Raheem, well, it was this great, has been great. To know you. And, um, Likewise. Yeah. I still make a mean egg McMuffin, you know, so those <laughs> skills come into play. <laughs> oh, but exactly. It's like you never forget. You never right? forget. <laughs> but uh, we've had this chance to chat and get to know each other and hopefully next year we'll see each other at the conference in person. So I can't wait. Can't wait to meet you in person. All yep. right. Okay, awesome. Ruth. Thanks, Raheem. Bye. Okay, bye.